My message tonight, the kind of faith God wants you to have. Yes. Um, and I never, I only gave a couple of these scriptures, but this one of them I never preached before. So this is really a new message for me tonight. And uh, man, I mean, he gave me this thing the other day, and I, went, I just went nuts all week, I'm telling you. So if you have your Bible, we're going to start with Jesus first. Amen. I like what he's saying, faith be child again. You know what faith does? Faith have a voice. You know that, don't you? Faith also sees stuff done before you even get it done, before you even ask. Faith always brings victory. Faith have a voice. That's why Satan always wants you to pray solid prayers. Because there's no faith in solid prayers. Faith have a voice. And you're going to see. Faith believe before you even speak it. And I'm going to prove it to you. Faith says it before it even happens. Because faith already see it done. Faith and faith eyesight is already finished. Amen, church? Amen. The Lord tonight? Yes. Yep. Oh, watch this. I like that little specific word with my faith. If you, if you came up there and you wanted to say, and I pray for you twice, he'll, he'll say, where's your faith? You know what I mean? In other words, he's saying, you get it. It's up to you now. I don't pray for you. It's up to you to get it. You see what I mean? We think we're going to get hand laid on up 15,000 times. That's okay to get prayed for. But guess what? God wants you to get it. How do you get it? Open up your mouth. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Y'all see you here today. Amen. Let me say what faith is. Everybody go to John chapter 11. What verse? John chapter 11. I'll tell you when you get there. Y'all love God tonight? Yes. John chapter 11. When you get to say glory. 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 Everybody got it? Yeah. Come on, Rod. Read, read verse. Read verse 32 for me. 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Thank you. Now look what Jesus did. Let me show you what faith did. They tell him Jesus all the negative. If he'd have been there, he wouldn't have died. This and that, this and that. He paid no attention. Why? Because faith already seen him raised from the dead. Come on. Guess what Jesus said? Where do you lay him at? Where have you laid him at? He's already seen them dead. He didn't see the devil always going to give you the negative. The devil always going to show you all the disappointment stuff. He always going to tell you the sad stuff. But Jesus paid no attention. He just said, where you laid him? That's what faith does. Where you laid him at? Amen. You hear me, church? And then he said, did I not tell you if you believe you'll see my glory? If you just believe, you'll see the glory? And what he did, they have to come forth. Jesus always required to do something. He said, now you lose him, let him go. He said, now you move the stone. Are you hearing me, church? Yes. Faith, already said. Where you laid it? And where you laid it? 
You got to get to that point that you start talking to your, that, that circumstance in your life. Yeah, right. Who do you think you are, problem? You got to start speaking to your mountain, the creed to your mountain, the clarity to the mountain in your life in Jesus' name. No, I'm not, I'm not confused anymore. I have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name. You got to start talking this way. Amen, Trent? Faith, see it done. Okay, y'all sure you're here now. Yes, sir. Oh, bless the Lord. Come on, Roy, you're going to be with me tonight. Go with me to John 21. Okay. John chapter 21. And I'll just start with verse 1. And just go to tell you to stop. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples of the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Everybody say, Caught nothing. They caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And then when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. That's good about that, brother. Look, look what Jesus said. Let me tell you what faith did. Faith is a cat on the right side. Yeah. Oh, you hear me, church? Right. He's already seen it. Faith already saw the fish getting in the net. Uh, Y'all hear me tonight? Yes. Yeah. You have to begin to say it before you see it. Yeah. You have to say it. Catch on the right side. Now, you're going to see in a minute that he told me to launch out into the deep. Launch your faith out the deep, what he's telling us. This time, he told them specific what side to, to, to catch it on. See, you got to obey when God tells you to do something. you got to obey. But God already see it done before it's done. That's why he said, by my strap to a heel. Listen, when you hear in Romans 4, everybody go to Romans chapter 4. Then we're going to come back to that. Go to Romans chapter 4. Y'all love God tonight? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be here. Yeah. What time goes to the Old Testament? I want to show you use. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Glory. Glory. One glory. <laughs> okay, that's two. That's three now. Or two or three gets my name. I'm in the midst. Got three glories now. Glory. <laughs> uh, Romans chapter 4. Look at verse 17. Uh, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things would be not what? Though they are. You have to call things to be not though they are. You have to call yourself successful. You have to call yourself prosper. You have to call yourself healed. You have to call yourself strong. You have to, that's what the Bible says. Let the weak say what? Strong. Let the redeemer of the Lord do what? Say so. You have to call yourself this stuff, church. Y'all quiet tonight. Y'all all quiet tonight. We're here. Are oh, you hear me, church? Hallelujah. Call those things. You remember, you remember a few weeks ago I told you the Bible said his name was Abram? But he said Abram going to change the name. And Abram, you're going to be named Abraham, the father of many nations. So guess what he did? He changed. He heard what God said. You're Abraham, the father of many nations. So Abraham started going around saying, I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. And guess what happened? He became that. Am I right, Rod? Amen. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to call yourself these things. Yeah. Are y'all here to church? Everybody say I'm strong. I'm strong. Wow. Say I'm bold. I'm bold. Say I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm full of faith. I'm bold. And power. And power. And power. See, you got to start talking this way every day. My wife is healed. Thank you, Jesus. I agree. Thank you. And by his strike, listen, listen to what he's saying. By his strike, you're not going to be healed. Amen. I don't want to be. By his strike, you already healed. Yeah. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't say by your strap you're going to be healed. He said by my strap you are healed. Amen. So you have to start telling yourself every day, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name. I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name. Thank I'm healed. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Faith have a voice. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Are you here, church? Yes. Y'all sure y'all love God tonight? Yes. yes. Ooh, come Amen. on, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to get ahead of myself. Go with me to Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. We're going to look at the boat again. No, 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 no. Yeah, Matthew 17. Oh, watch this. Hello, Lord, great. Come on in, Jesus. Oh, open the door. Hallelujah. Matthew 17, y'all got to say glory. glory. Come on, Rod. Verse 26. The 27. Verse 26 and 27. Peter said to him, from strangers, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Look what he said. Go and catch this fish. Go. Catch this fish. Yeah. And you're going to find some money in his mouth. And then you're going to take care of my business and take care of yours too. He know where the money at. Are oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. He's already know my stuff at church. Well, look what it he just said. Go catch that fish right there. Throw your hook in there. Catch that one. That one got some gold in his mouth. Must be catfish. Are oh, you hear me, church? Are oh, y'all hear me? Yes. Faith saw the money. Faith saw the fish with the money. And guess what he said? Let's go catch the fish. <coughs> And guess what happened? They obeyed and they caught the fish with the money. When you obey the voice of God, fame will happen for you. Good thing. Are y'all hear me, church? Everybody say, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Guess what the Bible says? The Bible says you have his mind, the Bible says you have his nature, and the Bible says Christ is, so are you. And you got to start saying every day, as Christ is, so am I. As Christ is, so am I. Guess what happened when you start saying every day? You begin to look just like it. You begin to act like it. You begin to move like it. You begin to talk like it. You begin to walk, operate, and heal it, and deliver some miracle, just like him. Why? Because as Christ is, so am I. So every time you start saying that, as Christ is, so am I. As Christ is, so am I. All of a sudden, all sickness leave you because Christ had no sickness in it. Right. Oh, you hear me, church? As Christ is so much. Well, guess what? Christ wasn't sick, so neither am I. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. Christ wasn't afraid, so neither am I. Christ wasn't double minded, so neither am I. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. Christ is not confused, so no, I'm not. Oh, you hear me, church? He bought us a lion, so am I. He raised devils, so am I. Oh, you hear me, church? Yes. As Christ is so am I. Christ was led by the Spirit in the morning for the night, so am I. Christ is here from heaven. Christ led by the Spirit. Christ can do anything that he heard Jesus say, God said to do it. So am I. Are y'all getting this? Yeah. Jesus, what do you want to say to us tonight? Isn't that look good? Y'all say y'all look good? Yes. Now go with me the Old Testament, Numbers. Chapter 20. This is the kind of faith God wants you to have. Face like Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. Numbers chapter 20. Chapter 20. How many want the God kind of faith? It's inside of you. You just got to develop it. How do you develop faith? Come right here. Hear by the word of God. That's how you develop. How does you develop? Praying in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Billy, you up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You want more faith? Praying in the Holy Ghost. You want more faith? Pray the word. Are you here in church? Yeah. Number it. Everybody got it yet? Yes. Yep. Chapter 20. Verse 7, brother. Go ahead. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes. Now stop with that for one second, brother. Notice he said, Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Okay, y'all hear to speak, right? Now keep going. And it will bring, heal its water. Thus you, will, you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? And then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. And then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me, 
to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Thank you, right there. Look what happened. Now, let me ask you, did y'all see it? Yes. <coughs> Moses, being used to using the rod. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Moses kept, let's say, Moses used the stick. Moses kept using the stick. And Moses was doing things that way all the time. The stick was working all the time. He hit the stick, and the stick hit the rock, and water came out. But this time, God said, no, 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 no. Why don't you speak to the rock? Speak to it. And he didn't. You see what I mean? And yet, because he obeyed, disobeyed God, guess what happened? They couldn't even enter in. He was in rebellion. See, you got to step out of that zone. Sometimes we want to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. God said, wait a minute, the stick been working for a long time. Well, I want to show you, I want you to get away from the stick. I want you to use your word, the word that I give you. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's the word that God trying to get you to do. The yeah. word. So he said, speak the word and watch water gush out of this rock. But he disobeyed God because he was so in tradition. He was so religious with that stick. Because that stick was the only thing working for him. It worked all over here. Now God said, no, -uh, I want to show you, it's the word. Oh, you hear me, church? When you get the word, man, the word, what the word know how to drain. Oh, you hear me? You know how to drain water out of a rock. The word does. You remember when Jesus said, when you, "Do y'all remember the story when Peter said, Lord, if you're really you, bid me to come out here and walk on the water.' Bid me. And guess what Jesus said? Come. And we always say, Peter, Peter was walking on faith. Peter walked on the word. Peter walked on come." That's what got Peter come. He said, come. Okay, he came. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. You got to know how to walk this stuff. Oh, you hear me? Everybody say, I will walk on the word. Walk on the word. What do you think the centurion, Jesus, the centurion told Jesus to speak the word only? Just say, come, and they say, come. Go, and they go. Come, and to this one, do this, and you do it. And guess what? Because I know Jesus is the word. He is the word. So when the word says something, it happens. They ain't changed. Are y'all with me, church? Yes. Yeah. Are you here? Are you hear me? Everybody say the word. The word. Everybody say the word works. The word works. Guess what? You got to know how to work the word. How do you work the word? Speak it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare and decree. Remember when he said make a vow of bed? You make a vow of bed. You can decree a thing and it's happening to stand up to you. The light is shining upon your way. God said make a vow of bed. My friend from Canada, when he said, sure, remember, you came to Canada, because I've been, I led his whole family, just about the whole family to Jesus, 20 some years ago. We've been friends every, and he called me four or five times a day, even now. He, he reminded me last night, he said, you remember you came to uh, uh, this, this this camp, and you did a revival to you, Roger and Ted? I said, yeah. He said, remember the, the words you gave us about make a vow of bed? He said, I made a vow to your ministry, and Ted and Roger's ministry. He said, we believe God that our house be paid, and we'll make one off the house. I said, okay, you made a vow to me, so I'm going to declare the decree. That's what I did. I want you to declare the decree. That it's sold. It's sold. It's sold now. It's sold now. God bringing the best buyer there. Yeah. That person in love with yeah. your house. When they say, oh, this is my house. Yeah. I love this house. I said, decree, the, the decree and declare it sold. And declare, declare yeah. decree yeah. money that you can make money. Guess what? Five days later, it was sold and they made thousands of dollars off the house. Praise they decreed it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you hear me, church? Yep. He said, decree a thing and it's seven yeah. established. Decree a thing and it's seven established. Mm -hmm. Decree. And that's what, you know what decree is? Prophesy. Speaking it, call on things we not what they are. That's what God, that's the kind of faith God trying to get me and you to walk into. That kind of do them a faith that say, oh no, uh -uh, God word said it. Smith Wiggle word. They brought a man, they brought him out of the hospital. The doctor came with him in the hospital bed. And he told Smith, he said, he got cancer, he died. And Smith said, where the cancer? He said, in the stomach. He hit the man in the belly. He couldn't say heal, but he said, ill. He hit him in the belly and the man died. He said, he's ill. And the man said, he's dead. They're going to sue you. He said, I say he's ill. And he went on down the line of praying people. Praying people, just praying, 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 praying. And about 15 minutes later, guess what happened? The same man that was dead, all of a sudden jumped up and walked down the way and said, he said, well, I can't pray to God. And he kept on praying. You see what I mean? Where is the sickness? What did Jesus say? Where are you laid it? Long time on the right side. Oh, you hear me, church? We need to start, we need, guess what we need to start doing? We need to get so much faith in us that we say, where is that sick person at? What hospital is he in? What is room number? And where is the sickness at, Dr. Nurse? And we need to go in there and say, in Jesus' name, die in his body in Jesus' name. Let's get out here and go home. 
Yeah. That's, that's the kind of faith God trying to get me to operate to. But guess what? You'll never get this kind of faith in a quiet person. Quiet people don't get nothing done. Nothing. 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 Quiet stuff don't move. No demons. Don't move. No problem. Don't move. No sickness. The Bible says Jesus carried the spirit with his word. The Bible said his word with power and with authority. Even unclean spirit obeyed him. The Bible said the storm obeyed him. The Bible said the fever obeyed him. Demons going? obeyed him. They obeyed his word. Are y'all with me today, church? Yeah. 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 You got to open your mouth. If you ever hang out with people and say, well, I don't have to read the Bible all day. I don't have to read the Bible all day. Get away from that person quick. That person's stealing from you. Are you hearing me, church? Y'all say you love God? Yeah. Everybody say, I will obey God. I will obey God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Y'all go with me. Y'all get this? Yes. Go with me to uh, 2 Kings. Oh, boy, y'all don't, if you don't, if you don't shout on this one, I'm going to have to just cover their hands on all of them. In fact, this was so good, I want to read this one just about all the way through. Hallelujah, Jesus. Second Kings what? Second Kings chapter 6. Come on, Rob. Get ready. Right. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Start with verse 1 and go. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please, let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. And let us make there a place where we may dwell. And so he answered, Go. And then one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Y'all got to hear this now. Please hear this. And he cried out and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. And so the man of God said, Where did it fall? <laughs> and he showed him the place. And so he cut off a stick and threw it in, the, in there, and he made the iron float. And therefore he said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. Oh, y'all hear me? Did y'all hear that? Did y'all really hear that? Yeah. The axe handle, the axe, the, the axe fell in the water. But he had borrowed it. And the Bible, the Bible says, and the man of God said, said, where did it go in at? It had so much faith, he just put the axe handle in there. And the, the thing came to it. You have authority. You have authority. That's the key right there. The man of God. Everybody say the man of God. The man, man of God. God. The man of God or the woman of God. Yes, and you I walk am. in authority. And you walk in that kind of faith. Yes. Guess what? Things obey. Yes, I am. Things obey. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all hearing today, church? Yes. yes. When you go home tonight, read this whole chapter. Because it's so good that you're going to see Elijah was so Oh, just keep reading the man of God. Y'all don't mind? I'm on verse 8. Okay, go. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel, and he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. And the king of Israel sent someone to the place in which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. He had called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Oh, stop it up a minute. How many more people hear God like that? Amen. I do. He heard what they were saying in their bedroom. Oh, you hear me, church? You're going to see some so powerful here. You're going to get, you're going to hear hearing and seeing. How many want to see like Jesus? I do. How many want to hear like them prophets? Yes, Lord. How many want to see like the prophet? Yes. Well, the Old Testament called them seers. They were seers. They could see. Woo! Keep going, my brother. <coughs> what verse are you in? Verse 13. Okay, go. So he said, Go and see where he is that I may send him and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night 
and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out. Wait, 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 wait. I don't mean to cut you off, but I do mean to cut you off. But everybody said they surrounded the city. That was a whole lot of soldiers. Yeah, yeah. You can surround the city. That's not a soldier. Yeah, well, keep on reading. Watch the picture here. And when the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And so he answered, Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was, when they had come to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes. And they saw, and there they were, inside Samaria. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? And he answered, You shall not kill them. Would you kill those whom you have taken captive with your sword and bow? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And then he prepared a great feast for them, and after they ate and drank, he sent them away, and they went to their master. That's good about that, brother. I think what I want y'all to see, the man of God yeah. had power to call Acts Hammer. The man of God had power to ask God to open up their eyes so he could see and hear. And the man of God said, make them blind. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. But the same man said, open up their eyes, too. This guy walked in faith. This guy walked in power. This guy walked in the anointing. And guess what? Guess what? He could have judged him. He could have beat him up. But he didn't. <coughs> well, you hear me, church? He could have had them all killed. But he didn't. Are well, you serious? You hear me, church? I'm telling you, Jesus is something else. He is something else. Let me tell you what God don't want me to do. Go around beating people up all the time. God want me to love people. You know how many people call me and tell me they hey, ain't sure, I'm struggling. I'm struggling this area. Do you know I never judge them? I never beat them up. Oh, you hear me, darling? No, they ain't getting beaten up. I can tell you. I, I took a lady in, in the prison with me. And remember last week I told you, it took us three months or uh, six weeks to get back where we were. Because when she went in the jail, we led everybody in that jail to the Lord. She went and start condemning them, start judging, start beating them. You all go to hell. And it took us about six weeks to get back where we was. Because he judged them and beat them. And you're going to hell. A lot of Christians already know they're going to hell. You don't have to tell them. God with you. They get Jesus. Jesus. And a woman at the well had five hours for and he said, the one that's in your house now is not even your husband. He never judged her, never beat her up. And the same woman went out and let the whole town to Jesus. Why? Because he didn't beat her up. Amen. Are you hearing, sir? Thank you, Lord. How about the woman that got in the country? You without saying that came for the first stone. And one of them rocks fell. Because probably half of them God had her. Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. Yes. Jesus. The Bible says you don't come to the nation and cry, Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus always warned on you to get it right, get it right, get it right. Jesus will never beat you up. Beat you up. I seen a preacher just kill people with the word. I had a young lady. Uh, she came, she came. I used to be a bouncer in the nightclub. And she used to come in the club all the time. We used to do cocaine together. We used to smoke pot. We did speed. We drank every single day together. Guess what? She found out that I got saved. She found me in my apartment and came knocked on my came knocked on my door and said, Is it true you got saved? I said, Yes. See, there's a Pentecost holy church. I live a block from that church, and all my life I want to go to that church. All my life I want to go to that church. She said, something about that church that I wanted to go to. She found out that I got saved. And she goes to the church. She walked in with some jeans on and makeup on and the preacher changed his message and called her Jezebel and told her you're going to hell and guess what happened? 
She don't want nothing to do with no church no more. She was a sinner. Went there to get saved. And the preacher preached a message against her. Oh, Lord. Oh, you hear me, church? Yes. She said, sir, I don't want to do with your God. I don't want to do with your Jesus. I said, that wasn't me preaching to you like that. I said, I'm not going to judge you. Amen. I'm not going to beat you up. Amen. And we think we're holding it out because we start judging people and judging them and judging them and judging them. They're only called in love. Jesus loved them and loved them and loved them and loved them. Love would beat the snot out of hell all the time. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. Y'all sure y'all love God tonight? Yeah, yes. Jesus, love you. Love you, love you. I had a young man one time coming to me. <laughs> listen, this is no joke. That man was crawling. He was so drunk. I mean, on all four. He was so drunk, he was crawling. I said, brother, you need Jesus. He said, I need something. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what he told me. I said, let me give you Jesus. He said, Jesus ain't going to save me the way I am. Look at me. I said, brother, he said, come as you are. Come drunk. Come cocaine out if you have to. I rest, I got on my knees on the ground with him. And I said, Jesus love you. He died for you. He said, how do I get him? Now this man on all four looking at me like this. And he prayed that sinner prayer with me. I kid you not. I've never seen this before, or since, or before, or after, or whatever. He prayed that sinner prayer with me and stood straight up and said, Where did my drunk go to? Glory to God. Just like that. Wow. Glory and if you just like that, Amen. Jesus never condemned you. Come on. Are oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. yeah. Everybody say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. 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 Jesus wants you to have this kind of faith. Yeah. That Jesus operated in power and love. Jesus has so many love in him, he gonna walk by you, look you in your eyes, and you want to follow him. Yeah. So much love. Amen. You ever notice? Mm -hmm. Not one time in the Bible, Jesus beat somebody up. Not one time he beat him up. He didn't turn over money tables. But that was, that was money tables. I'm talking about beating up that person up. You know, like condemning them with his, you know, with their word. Yeah. Condemning them with his word. Yeah. Because I can take that Bible right now, and I can cut you to pieces with it. I could be like one of the old time preachers that I saw when I was going, I didn't want to do with God. That hailstone, brimstone type preacher. That makes you don't want to get you. My grandmother was like that. My mom was like that. I didn't want the God that they serve. The God that they serve, you mess up, God will beat you up. We ran from that God. Literally ran from it. Then when I got, I got old enough, I went to a meeting. I said, Well, Jesus loved me. Oh, you hear me, church? Here I am, full of cocaine, going to the altar. When I went to the altar, all the cocaine devil left me. Oh, you hear me, church? And now he gave me a, a, a ministry to drive devils out of people. Oh, you hear me, church? To raise dead folks up, to heal the sick, to get people saved, to feel the Holy Ghost. But God is telling you and me, I want you to operate that kind of faith that you speak it before you even see it. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Oh, I like you said earlier, but we need to start declaring the Korean revival in, 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 in Vancouver. Hey, not your grandmother, grandmother, grandmother revival. Not a Captain Kuma revival. We're talking about a now revival. Let me tell you what the Bible said in Isaiah, I mean in Psalm 55, 17. He said, God will afflict even abide them of old because they have no change. They fear not God. They don't want to change. This is the way I am. And God said, he said, they fear not God. Oh, you hear me? Maybe down to the Father. Yeah. But it, 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 yeah, it's down to the Father. Uh, I think 17 said, even in the morning, the night will I pray. Yeah, I pray aloud, right? Yeah. What's 17. the next verse say? Read it. Say, he hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle. That was against me, for there were many. But keep going. God shall hear, afflict them, even as He abideth the whole. Seal, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. They don't want to change. That's the way my great grandmother did. That's the way her granddaddy did. And that's what I'm going to do. You better find out how Jesus do it. Amen, church. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, the Bible says, "Behold, listen to this now. 
We are all I'm doing a new thing. And now it's just spring forth. Are you with me, church? Yes. Yes. Everybody say, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. For a New Testament revival. This is what God wants to write. And I do believe America about to get hit hard with a revival. A heart. I mean, America about to get shown up, hit by God's power. It really is. Ron Hawk is coming here to evangelize America. Are oh, you hear me, church? I remember him 10 years ago. God spoke to Ron Hawk and say, Africa blood washed. Blood washed, not God sending here in America saying the same thing. American blood washed. American blood washed. Why? Because God is raising us from the evangelists. ain't coming here preaching for money. They come here preaching for souls. Right. Amen, church? Amen. Souls, souls, souls. Amen. And I'm telling you, this is what God is doing. He's raising up people right now. To bring the harvest in. That prophecy I got that said, This is the year of harvest. This is the year of harvest. This is the year of harvest. I'm telling you, God embraced up some women and men that gonna go out and preach the gospel with love and compassion and with power and with boldness and with authority that who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God has raised up. He ain't raised up no Christian that can be pointing fingers at people when they mess up. He can raise up people that are gonna snap you from the jaws of hell. Amen, church. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is raising up people that are going to a bar and enter that bar out. God is raising up people that are going to a funeral home and how all the dead folks been dead three or four days waiting to get in the ground. And guess what? They're going to walk out that funeral home. These are the kind of people God is raising up. Everybody say, that's me. Amen. Say, I received that. I received that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's what you got to do. You got to get set free from yourself. Yes. Look what you said. Oh, I'm gonna get saved from the devil. I'll let me tell you something. You got Jesus Christ in your heart, and you speaking the tongue. The devil ain't got no business in you. Amen. Oh, you hear me, church? You got to get saved free from you. You got to get saved free from your own crazy mind. Oh, you hear me, church? You got to quit talking down on yourself. You got to quit saying I can't. But you got to start saying I can do all things you Christ Amen. Every time you say I can't, I can't, I can't, you prophesy over you yourself. Doom and gloom. I can't do this. I just can't make it. I'm just so confused. I just can't get over this. Oh, why am I keep struggling? Why am I keep doing it? That's why you keep doing it because you keep saying it. So when you start saying I'm free. Everybody say I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Say I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say I have the mind of Christ. I have, I have the mind of Christ. Christ. I have the nature of Christ. I have, I have the nature of Christ. I am bold as a lion. I am bold as a lion. Everybody say I'm the righteous of Christ. I'm the righteous of Christ. I am the righteous. I am the righteous of Christ. Of Christ. One more time. I am the righteous. I am the righteous of Christ. Can I say something to you? Then I'm gonna pray for you. Yeah. You ever notice when some people mess up and they think they got to go fast 20 days, 30 days to get back right with God? I got to go pray this way, do this way. You're doing about works now. Yeah. This is going to blow your mind. Yeah, yeah. The second you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of all the wrong sin I committed. Forgive me of that sin I committed. Guess what? You right back in the right standing with it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Right back in the right center with it. And if I have to repent, you can change the mind, change it, walk away from it. That's what it means. You right back, you ain't got to go do all this, all this stuff, all this, all this, and all that. Just say, Father, I ask you to forgive me for the filthiness that I did. And you ain't got to go tell nobody your problem. You ain't got to go tell nobody what I got forgiven for. Between you and God. And watch this now. And the Bible say, and God do not remember it no more. Thank you, Jesus. Are oh, you hear me, church? The only one that know about it is you and the devil. So right. you don't want to bring it up, and you keep bringing it up, and he'll tell you, well, he, you can be praying like a crazy man, or a crazy man, just, just praying, praying, praying. And all of a sudden, he show you what you did wrong and make you feel like you weren't good enough to be, to, to be forgiven. Are y'all hearing me, church? Yeah. Just see you love God? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. Say it again, I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. I'm full of power. I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. I'm full of power. I'm full of power. You got to believe it. You got to believe that you don't want God looking for you. You got to believe that you don't want that God looking for you. Show himself strong through. You have to believe and see it. How many, how many in this room, you have been sitting down, you might be watching TV or whatever you're doing, and all of a sudden, 
Have you ever seen yourself preaching to thousands and thousands of people at one time? Amen. Anybody like that? Amen. That was not the devil showing you that. That was God showing you that. So if you've got that vision, you've got that dream, you've got that thought, that's what you're going to be doing. That's exactly what you're doing. But how do you get there? How do I get there? How, how do you get there? By doing the one, and the two, and the three, and the twelve, and the seventy, and the five thousand, and the mother two. You got to start somewhere. How many of us had a dream or a vision that you saw yourself praying for somebody and they got healed? Let me see your hand. How many of you have seen yourself cast a devil on somebody? All the time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess what that means. You'll be doing it. But guess what you got to do? You got to go in the scripture and find out how Jesus did it. And then go and find a guy online that know how to do it the right way. Well, you hear me, church? Find out how Jesus did it and wear it out. Because what I found out in the scripture... But I can cast out devil for a year and a half. I walk the streets at night. Thank the Lord for teaching me how to cast out devil. Thank the Lord for teaching me how to cast out devil. And my day came. And I kept saying, I'm going to cast devil out of people. I'm going to cast devil out of people. And it came to pass. And guess what? For 20 some years, all I've been doing. Mm -hmm. It'll happen to you. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask this question and I'm going to close. What do you believe God calling you to do? This man right here. Take my tongue. I'm talking about in the ministry for working for him. Lift other people up. I agree. Start doing it. How about you, brother? Encourage. Okay, how about you, sister? I want a soul. Man, a soul. How about you, brother? Feed my land. How about you? Nurture support. Who? Nurture support. Amen. How about you? To give her to give her testimony. Amen. How about you, brother? Continue ministering on the streets. Amen. How about you, brother? Teach. Teach. How about you? To heal the broken thinking. How about you? Save souls. How about you? How about you, brother? Uh, I pray for people and encourage people. Amen. How about you, brother? Raise people up. Amen. How about you? Raise people up. Let them know what's ahead for them. Amen. How about you, sister? I find out the, the broken heart. Amen. How about you, brother? To encourage and to bring his life. Amen. How about you? Okay, how about you? I think uh, soul winning. Soul winning? Okay. Okay. How about you, bro? Mm. <laughs> Let's get a little quick. Fire. Fire, okay. How about you? Teach. Teach. Preach. 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 Oh, my God. How about you? Watch for this. How about you? Yeah. Raise nice kids. Stronger. Yeah. He was in me than he was in the world. I have authority over all the power. Get behind me. Say it again. I have authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall I I command you, get out. Say it again. I command you, get out. Say it one more time. I command you, get out. Now say that you really mean it. I command you, get out. Now let me tell you something. Because the Bible said he can immediately just steal the word. Now guess what? Now ask yourself this question. Besides Saturday we went out cooking, cooking for people. Ask yourself this question. How many have done what you say you believe you call God called you to do? Done. You see what I mean? Now look, what's the answer though? But God ain't mad at you. Now just go do it. Amen. Just do it. Yeah, sure. Because all we have this. God don't mean nothing you say, He means what you do. You have to do it. Faith that work is what? Yes. 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 You have to do it. You have to do it. I'm striving to win 100 million, 200 million people in Jesus. That's my goal. That's my goal. I want to see that many filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to see that many healed and delivered the miracles. 
Not only that, one of my vision is, is to have one of the biggest warehouse you ever seen in America to feed people and to close people. I want 18 wooden trucks. So every Thanksgiving and Christmas time, I go around feeding people and giving kids toys and, and giving kids this and that, this and that. <coughs> That's my dream and my dream since I got saved. <coughs> and let me tell you what the prophet said from Canada. And I'm telling you, and I know they were telling the truth. They said, God will give you wisdom to step into your dreams. Dream that you have thought would have bought it. Stolen, even the dream that you laid down. And God had damned you to dream again. And God know that I had laid those things down. I had laid them down. Dreams. I had a dude ranch so I could get kids and young men and young women that have been messed up on dope and drugs for years and years and years and get them on that ranch and make men and women out of them. I'm dreaming again. So every morning when I wake up now, I'm dreaming again. You see, and the Bible, and he, this is what he said. He said, God is daring you to dream again. And then I like the following he said, and God said, and you will walk in the greater power of the Holy Ghost. And this is a year of favor. The impossible becomes possible. Are you with me, church? He said, you will no longer be able to give out, but you will give out with abundance. And I like what he said. The number 13 means seeing and rebellion. It is coming down. Oh, you hear me, church? Yeah. He said, line up with the word and not the world. Yeah. Oh, you hear me, church? And then he said this right here. The year 2013. Mm -hmm. We'll witness the greatest heavenly angelic visitation that we have witnessed. I'm talking about the church now. We're about to see something. Revival. We're about yes. to see angel, angelic angel visit us in our meetings. You want to see angels visit you in your home. Are oh, you hear me, church? Everybody say, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, we're about to operate in the supernatural. Supernatural, supernatural. That's what God wants you to begin to say stuff before you even have it. Begin to see it. You have to see it. And when you see it, all oh, remember this. You see it in your spirit, man. And when you see it, you begin to speak it out. Next time you have a, a, a vision, a little dream, or a heavy thought, and you see in yourself, pray for sick people when you get healed, you better go to war and start speaking. Start speaking. Amen? Amen. The impossible become possible. Yes. We're about to see the miraculous. And that's the one thing God spoke to you and said, I want you to believe me for the miraculous. Believe me. And guess what? How in the world you put an eye candy and water and steel came to wood. <laughs> oh, you hear me, church? On a metal, that, that what you call those things, those magnetic stuff, they, they, you know, that come together. Not no iron, steel come to wood. Oh, you hear me, church? Everybody said, I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of power. I said, I've got that kind of power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Are you ready for this? I want to close. You ready for this? It's in you. Just develop it. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive that power. Yeah. I agree. True. Whatever power you want to operate in, it's already in you. You've got to develop it. Yeah. And so how do you develop it? I agree. Talk it. Act on it. Talk about it. Brag on it. Yeah. Talk about it. And one scripture God say, the David said, Lord, both of them. I will boast on you. I will brag about you. You ought to tell God every day, give me something to brag about. Give me something to brag about. Let me do something today that was so powerful that I'm bragging about. Amen, church? Amen. It's like when I went to the hospital in Dothan, Alabama. The woman that was dying had all the tubes inside of her throat. I had tubes in her head. And I went and prayed for her, anointed oil, and left. But before I left, I left 14 people to Jesus in that room that day. And I was tired. I know the oil left. A week later, I get a phone call. Brother Sherby, Brother Sherby. I said, yes. Are you sitting down? I said, no. She said, sit down then. She said, my aunt that you prayed for is at home. God came in the, in, in the hospital room and came and did a miracle while she was asleep. And the doctor, she was brain dead, church. 
And when I say brain dead, the only thing keeping alive is that machine she was on and all them tubes that was in her. That's the only thing keeping alive. And guess what happened? She at, she's at home. Hallelujah. She came in. She said, God, give me something to brag about. That's awesome. That's, that's all be your prayer. Give me something to brag about. Let me pray for somebody today and they got out of the wheelchair. Come on. Let me pray for a man like I prayed in Cleveland, Tennessee, with his arm all deformed and his back all crippled over, and he walked like this, and he all crippled with a big old hump on the back. And you start praying for him, and you start seeing bone popping, hearing bone popping, bone, and next thing you know, the man is straight up walking up right, jumping up, kissing you on the jaw, and they give you his cane. Why don't you tell God he used something to pray and brag about? Are oh, you here, in church? Yeah, yeah. Glory to God, you go to the hospital. You don't know about the hospital. You just decide to go to the hospital. And there's two men in the hospital room. And you don't even know them. And you stick your hand to the door and say, hey, do I know you? He said, I don't know. Come a little closer. I go a little closer. And they say, you know, I said, I'm a preacher. You are? I said, can I ask you a question? If y'all die today, you're going to ask him. If you're going to die today, where are you going to go? He said, I don't know. Probably hell. But do you want to go to hell? No, sir. You want Jesus? Yes, sir. And he accepted Jesus, and I prayed for him, and he sat up in the bed. And the man in the next, next, next bed over said, how about me? Pray for him. And I prayed for him on him. I went back to the next day to visit them God. And the nurse said, hey, they went home. All of a sudden, they just got better. They went home. Hey, why don't you give God something to brag about? Here, yeah, God, give me something to brag about. Amen. Amen, church? Amen. Are you here, church? Please. Glory to God. Pray for a lady that you thought that was six months pregnant. She had a tumor. You thought it was a, a baby, but it was a tumor. And you lay your hands on it, and the thing disappeared before your face. Are oh, you hear me, church? Oh, you pray for another lady that got a tumor on her, and she prayed for her. She go home three or four weeks later, she gives you a call. I'm washing dishes, and she was washing dishes. She said, Brother Sherman, I felt some crawl down my back, down my side. I said, what do you mean? She said, I pulled my shirt up. That tumor fell down on the floor, and I looked at my skin. There was brand new skin on my body. So you give me, tell God to something to brag about. How many of this one got to this woman like this? One hand. How about when somebody get raised from the dead and your media die with a massive heart attack and God raised them up from the dead? That happened to me. How about when you're in Canada and a young man, a little down drone, little down drone syndrome kid, uh, uh, with no eyeballs in his head. Y'all think I'm lying. He opened his eyes, all he saw is holes. And the Lord said, tell his mama I want to give him a new heart. She said, how do you know that? I go and pray for the man that looked for a heart and next thing you know, I said, the Lord, then I have to see uh, something supernatural. You can see the skin moving. You see the heart moving. And he's looking at me. I mean, the mom looking at me like, huh, what's going on? I said, let me pray for his eyes. And he did like this, and he got blue old blue eyes. I see this. Yeah. Wow. Jesus is wonderful. He's wonderful. He'll do it for you if you believe it. Amen. If you believe it, he'll do it for you. Are you with the church? Y'all missed a good chance to scream hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I can sit here for two weeks straight and tell you a miracle that I've seen that I have never told you before. God gave me a new heart. You see, He gave her a new heart. He gave it to you too. What do you believe in God for? He'll do it for you. But guess what? He wants to operate through you. Right. He wants to shine through you. Nobody in the room got saved just to be getting saved. You got saved to work for Jesus. That's right. You got saved yeah. to do the work of an evangelist. Right. You got saved. Now listen, all y'all, what y'all say God called you to do, but I got a new for you. Everyone in this room, everyone in this room, according to the Bible, give you all the spirit of reconciliation. He give you all the spirit of soul winning. Yes, and everybody in this room, he anointed you to lay hands on the sick. To cast out the devil. To give you the field of the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room. Everybody. In this room is going to be doing this. Amen, church. Everybody. Everybody say, it's me. It's me. So I see you talking to me tonight. In Jesus' name. So I'm a believer. And these sides will follow me. Because I believe. Stand up. Everybody stand to you. You can just stay it up for me.